So, questions? We good? All right, we're going to talk about magic for a little bit. We're going to talk about Sanderson's Laws. Sanderson's Laws of Magic are actually just general storytelling laws seen through the eyes of magic systems. All right? Magic systems are what I like, um, and so my laws kind of focus on these things. Um, and I'll just write the three laws up here. I'm at three right now. The third one's not very good yet. Um, so, um, boy, this, the first one's long. Okay. So, your ability... As a writer, remember I T E R. Wow, yes, <laughs> R to satisfactorily. That's not how you write that. There, right? Sure. <laughs> Satisfactorily. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Running on chalkboards. You don't have. You, you train your fingers to type. Have you heard teachers talk about this before? The more we type, the more that our fingers know how to spell things, and we don't actually. Um, no, it's satisfactorily. I'll try and write it right. We know what you mean. There. That's exactly right. That's exactly what I wrote before. <laughs> there. No, that's not right either. <laughs> How do you spell that word? Factor. Factorally? I? 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 L Y? That does not look right. Give me a Y. Satisfact. The last half being a squiggle gives more character. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, I guess. Okay. How about this? Hey, how about this? Yeah, no. <laughs> no, we had it right. S A T I S F A C. Yeah, satisfying. All right, there we go. Your ability as a writer to solve problems with magic in a satisfying way is directly proportional to how well the reader understands said magic. That's law number one. These are really more like guidelines, kind of like the pirate's code. We're going to go backwards because I put this one on the right for whatever reason. Two. All right. Limitations are more important than the powers themselves. All right. All right. Everything influences everything. I got to find a pithier way to say that one. Um, so, Sanderson's three laws slash somewhat interesting things to write about magic. Um, these came from, some of you have probably heard this story. I sat on a panel at Worldcon 2004, I think it was. Um, whichever one was in uh, Boston. I had sold a book. I, didn't think it was <clears throat> I don't think it was out yet. It might have been the first year launch was released. I can't remember. But um, sat on the panel at the Worldcon. Um, and you know, it was my first panel at a major convention. I felt pretty cool being on a, a panel and now being a actually soon to be published writer. Um, and you know, they, they put me on a panel. They asked me what I would be good on. I said, I really like magic systems. Put me on a magic system panel. And they did. 
was my one panel uh, before a crowd of you know all these people who were uh, established pros and or longtime fans and they knew their stuff and I'm like all right I'm gonna get up there and I know this one so I'm up there with this um, this group of people and the moderator looks to me and I'm at the end they said Brandon why don't you start um, this is a panel about how magic um, how to write magic in books uh, what's your piece of advice and I said well obviously your magic system should have rules I thought I was you know kind of uh, they, they softballed it to me and I just thought I would go with the easy one and not get in trouble the other panelists all looked at me and said you're crazy that's stupid if magic has rules it ruins the book um, and I was like oh um, and then we proceeded to argue for like 20 minutes um, and um, I'm pretty good at arguing, so I was okay. But I felt kind of dumb when it was me versus everyone. And they were all women. I don't know why that was. Um, it was. It was me versus the women who don't like rules for their magic. Um, but they made some actually really good points, one of which was how many people that read Tolkien understand the rules of Tolkien's magic. Um, and... If you're a wizard, you can do magic, yes. Um, and they, they pointed out that, and that, in their opinion, a really good fantasy novel was one where the magic maintained a strong element of mysticism and mystery to it to preserve the sense of wonder to storytelling, particularly to the magic. You could, you could plan for everything, but you couldn't plan for the magic. And these were actually really good arguments that sent me home thinking thinking about why don't I write stories like that and am I just wrong and what it came down to is when I thought about it the stories that were doing that really well and when they were doing it really well were the stories where the magic did not save the day where the magic caused problems or the magic was a facilitator but at the end of the day there were there were more directly human solutions this is the reason um, George R. R. Martin doesn't like magic by the way um, he wants his books to all have humans um, doing human solutions. Uh, he and I have argued about this before, too, so um, that's why I bring him up. Um, I, and I came to the understanding that I like magic where I understand the magic. In my books, magic is really just a new branch of science. That fascinates me. I really like the idea of people learning about science and people learning about this blend of science and mysticism that is what we call magic in my books. Um, that's my take on it. But it's not the only way to do it right. And if I started teaching people to write stories that way only, I would be not doing them justice. And so instead, I started devising this sort of concept. And I wrote a big essay on it, and I called it Sanderson's First Law because you, know, you kind of have to be arrogant to be a writer in the first place, so I figured, why not? Um, <laughs> Clark's got laws, right? Asimov's got laws. Where are the fantasy writer laws, right? All the science fiction people have laws. Fantasy writers um, need to be making laws. So I came up with some. Um, and the idea for this was a guideline for myself. All right? This isn't a guideline for when I read a book necessarily. Um, it will bug me if they don't do this right. But it's a w thing I wrote to myself to explain to myself how to approach my magic systems. And it is something that I've actually gotten better at doing and I think has made my book stronger. It's not something I was always good at. The idea is I am explaining the magic so that the reader can anticipate what the characters do with the magic during the course of the book. I am forcing myself then to stick to those explanations so that the reader can anticipate the magic and we avoid what is called deus ex machina. Is anyone familiar with that term? All right, let's have someone who doesn't talk as much, yeah. Basically it means that the book is going on great, the writer writes their character into a corner, and then this magical unicorn comes out of nowhere and saves them. Exactly, magic unicorn it comes from um, Greek plays. Um, it's actually Latin though, deus ex machina, uh, God from the machine. Um, which is, you know, the god would, would come down and save the day at the end because everyone is written into a corner. Um, and this is, leads to unsatisfying conclusions of books. Why would this be unsatisfying? What's unsatisfying about it? Well, because if, you know, God could come in and fix all the problems for uh -huh. you, then why are we reading about these characters? Yeah, you get one too. <laughs> all right, go ahead. I'll throw you another one. What's that? It subverts everything the characters do throughout the entire book. If yeah. Now is the solution. Yeah, exactly. I'm not a great th thrower, so sorry. <laughs> if the character, why did you even need to have the character in the first place if God could have done it anyway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
the, the, it undermines conflict, right? Uh, anything else on this one that's just, yeah. I think readers like to feel smarter than the writers. Okay. Yes, that's good. Doing it the way I do it, I, I, I usually want the reader to be able to figure out what's going on about a paragraph before it happens. And if some readers will figure out sooner because you can't get, you can't write it in a way that works, you know, that way for everyone. But hopefully the ones that figure it out sooner feel really smart. And the ones that don't figure it out, usually it's because they don't want to. A lot of write readers, like my wife, who's a very clever person, does not want to figure out what's going to happen because she wants to be surprised. She wants to go along with the ride. Um, and so those readers, hopefully it'll hit them. They'll be like, wow, that was awesome because that's what I wanted. And th so the idea is to, to, to work for everyone. Yeah, OK. So was there another hand here? Yeah, let's do this. Oh, this is my favorite quote. I think it was the enforcer said that a happy ending doesn't mean it ends happy for us. Yeah. It means there's some moral development. Right. And that's what we read for is for the character to yeah. develop.